Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penright Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Hello and welcome to another episode of Classic Restos. But first, it's time to go and buy some stuff. Have a look at this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. And on today's show, I thought I'd come along once again to the Ballarat Turf Club in regional Victoria. Now, although there are no horse races on here today, as such, there is, however, plenty of horse power. It is a celebration of everything built by GM. Welcome to the 2015 fourth annual All GM Day. No matter who we are or what we do, we have some memory of a GM-built car somewhere in our lives. The history of General Motors, deriving from the United States, is of course one of the world's largest car and truck manufacturers, and with runs of over 100 years on the board to prove its success. GM was founded in 1908 in Detroit, Michigan as a stock-holding company. Over many decades, General Motors has been renowned for building some of the most luxurious and performance motor cars available. And in recent times, the company is responsible for employing just over 200,000 people globally. GM manufactures its cars and trucks in 35 countries. In 2008, 8.35 million GM cars and trucks were sold around the world under various brands. Then we cross to our shores where of course the mighty Holden was born in Australia in 1948 and we all know the legacy that began after that. Yes, it was officially Australia's own mass produced car designed at a price that the average working Australian may be able to have afforded at the time. Well, that's enough of the talk. It's time now to get around and do the walk. I'll uh, probably still be some more talk. First cab off the rank today, it's got to be a Holden. Absolutely. How are you, Peter? Very well, thank you, Fletch. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way. It's not just a Holden, it's a special Holden. It's a rear Holden. That's why I've picked on it. Now, we've got a HQ. It's a wagon. It's a 202 four-speed car. Yes, yes. What year are we looking at, Peter? Uh, it's a December 73. It was actually ordered by the original owner in May 73, uh, but it took seven months to be built and delivered because of its very, very special sort of um, specification, Fletch. It's, a, it's a, a very odd sort of a build. How cool, too, to get the GDS Dash. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the original owner was a chap by the name of, uh, of Mr. William Lee, who uh, he was a farmer from out of, out of Adelaide. Yeah, they called him Bill, right? Yeah, Bill. That's that's close enough. And um, he he ordered it especially for what he particularly wanted. He just wanted a six cylinder. Um, I bought it from his niece's husband, who'd had it since uh, Bill passed away. Um, it has the outback pack, which is pretty unusual. Um, GDS dash M24 speed, um, six cylinder engine, um, bucket seats, full console. Um, Air Chief Radio, so um, well optioned up car, yeah. And of course I always go on about my steel wheels and here we have the classic example of the the General Motors Holden dog dish hubcap, uh, fairly narrow tyres, I mean it, it just fits so well with that type yeah, of car doesn't it? Too, it has the wheels are, are colour coded to the car, they're Belmoral Green, they're not yeah. silver yeah. which I believe is part of the um, Outback pack yeah. because the, the silver wheels were prone to rusting. It's an incredible car, you know it's yeah. really special to come along to an event like this and to see a car such as this so preserved I mean that I think is just a beautiful thing yeah. with it within itself and such a rare thing too, I mean it's not a 308 car, it's not a performance no. car no. it's back in the day more of the bog standard type yeah, variety. Um, interestingly, when I was 19, I started work at Coliseum Motors in Ballot, which was the Holden dealer, and I worked at Holden dealers for seven.
seven years when I was a young bloke. Um, now back in the HQ era, which was um, late 71 to uh, 74 as you would know, um, during that time I can only recall one four speed uh, HQ wagon being sold to the dealership that I worked at and that was a Prem 308 uh, GDS dash like this one, GDS wheels, all that sort of stuff. But that was a Prem, um, you know, five litre or 308. Um, I'd nev I've never seen another six cylinder four speed. I'm not saying there aren't others, of course there are, but that's the only one that I've actually seen. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you, Peter. Thanks for being on today's show, mate. Pleasure, Fletch. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been great. Thank Cheers. you. Time for James now. Hello, James. How are you on, Flex? Good, mate. Good. Hey, guess what the importance of this segment is? This here, look, before we go any further, how old are you, may I ask, or how young are you? I'm 18. Rightio. Now, we've got a 1980 VC Commodore, an SLE. Now, this car slips under the radar of classic restos because of the chrome bars. We've got a young guy here. This is the up and coming, the next generation into our classic car fraternity. Now, this Commodore obviously means a lot to you. How long have you had it? I've had it since I was six years old, so I've had it for over 12 years now. You've been driving since six? Uh, no, no, I haven't, no. <laughs> The constabulary haven't caught up with you yet. You're doing well. Yeah. Now, James, I think it's pretty cool. Not only do you have this uh, 1980 car, uh, to older people, uh, that doesn't sound like a real old car, and in the big scheme of things, it's not. But to you, it is, right? Yeah, it is a very old car to me, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I remember that, well, a lot of us remember when these things were brand new. I was just on the road every day. Uh, not only is it an old car, but I have to give you the accolade of how you are keeping this car in its condition now first of all you've done something there with the engine with the triple carbs tell us yeah. about that um well i've had the engine fully rebuilt um top to bottom it's xu1 specs so it's all got flat tops high comp the triple web is obviously you can see so it's a lot of money in it but yeah it's a it's a bit of a powerhouse now so the interior as well that's a that's a pretty comfortable ride in there too yeah, james very, com very comfy interior it's all original but it's like really top condition it's got one little mark in it but it's all original yeah. now james um, uh, I think that anybody that has a model of their car on the back seat or up on the top of the parcel shelf uh, at a car show or on the dash, that means a lot too. It's that extra extension of, of your thoughts on the car. Yeah, it does. Um, well, the model car, that actually gave me the idea of painting it the two-tone because it was originally not the two-tone. So, yeah, the model car gave me, some uh, gave me the influence to do all that. So, um, yeah. Good on you, James. Thanks for turning up here today. 1980 VC Commodore. And James here, young fella, uh, doing the brand proud. Good on you, mate. Thanks for speaking to me. You are watching the fourth annual 2015 All GM Day here at the Ballarat Turf Club in regional Victoria. Stay right where you are. Back with more classics right after this. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Look what Hair and Forbes has got. They've got this. They've got that. They've got this. And they've got that. They've got this. They've got that. They've got this. And they've got that. And so much more. But do you? Whatever you want, they've got. Walk through their doors, inspect their stores. Hair and Forbes has the range. And remember, you can always browse and buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penriteoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. Moving through the 2015 fourth annual All GM Day here at the Ballarat Turf Club. Time for Wayne now. How are you, Wayne? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Fletch. Good to see you. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. It's good to see you too. And uh, this second month, 1974 Statesman, a HQ Statesman. What a gorgeous car. Congratulations on this one, Wayne. Thank you. Uh, it's been uh, about a 10-month rebuild. Uh, bought it from a 97-year-old gentleman back in Melbourne. Um, we've taken the car back to him and showed him and he actually wanted to buy it back because it was better than 
when did he first bought it. Did you tell him to bugger off? Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, th he would have had tears in his eyes. Yeah, he did actually, yeah. So, no, he loved the car. So. First thing that got me when I walked past was the original brocade trim, the original interior, the original seats. Now, that is rare. No, it certainly is. Um, we did look around to get the seats recovered, but we couldn't find any of the, the, the cloth, but so we left them the way they were. So, yeah, we just had it all fixed up. And, mate, tell me, what's the go with the big red knob there on the dashboard? Oh, the big red knob was for uh, hazard lights. They still work at the moment. Um, the gentleman used to tow a caravan, so you want it to be safe on the yeah. side of the road. Yeah. So funny, isn't it? All the accessories from the 70s that people used to add onto the cars. You don't, you don't see people doing that these days. It was almost like the Dick Smith beer-powered radio back in the 70s. You know, <laughs> yeah. it certainly was. Yeah, it's amazing the amount of blokes who went through a carton just to listen to a, a three-minute song. Unbelievable back then. Uh, now, Wayne, the HQ now. Where does it go back with you? What inspired you to get a Statey? Uh, it was inspired by my wife. This this particular car belonged to my wife's next door neighbour. She grew up with the car since he bought it back in 74. So when she found out it was for sale, she was straight on the phone to me to tell me to buy it. So we bought it and we restored it for him for his 90, 98th birthday. Yeah. He, the gentleman's still alive and he's 99 at the moment. So, oh, Good on him. Isn't that wonderful? And I bet it drives beautifully as a car as well. Certainly does. We've just driven it to Bathurst and back this year, so yeah. um, absolutely love it on the highway. So, and When you see the tail lights out back, they, they were Australia's Cadillac, weren't they? Oh, it certainly was, and it was ba based on the Cadillac, so a yeah, beautiful car. Well done. Now, before we do go, uh, one question just really quickly. Uh, not an original intake manifold. You've gone a bit of a higher flow there in, up front. Yeah, I've gone with the higher flow because the actual motor is a 355 stroker now. So oh, okay. still original block and original yeah. heads, but we've yeah. just beefed that up a little bit. Yeah, so she's a little bit of a sleeper as well. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Wayne. You've got best of both worlds, mate. Thanks again for being on today's show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Fletch. With me now, Justin Mitchell, the chairman of the All GM Day Committee. How are you, Justin? I'm great, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. You would have to be happy. Uh, lipstick on both ears from smiling too much. I mean, what a day you've created. Look, it's an amazing result. We um, we had 550 cars last year. Uh, so far, the count's been 611 through the gate. Yep. So with a number of competing events on today as well, we're well pleased. We've also had some Buicks travel a fair distance to turn up today. Yeah, look, we try and put on a special display for something different. And all the Buicks together, look, one wonderful. There's a, a number of different ages there and stuff that you just don't normally see. Mate, it's great to see numbers increasing each year and this is happening right across the board with the majority of our of our car shows. You stand for a great charity. Tell us about that. Yeah, look, um, we um, we give our proceeds to the Ballarat uh, Children's Ward. Uh, it's a really easy sell for us to get people to volunteer to help because uh, a, a number of people within our club and certainly within the community uh, utilise that service and has been touched. And uh, so for us, it's a, a bit of giving back and uh, it really helps um, get that ten dollars off someone through the door. Yep. Uh, being the fourth annual event too, I guess has put you in a position to be able to donate many thousands of dollars to the hospital. Yeah, look, so far we've done about twenty-two thousand wow. dollars. Um, so with the result from this year, we expect to to, to bring that uh, right up. Tell us about the car club. Look, we've got 180 active members in the car club. It's uh, the Ballarat and District Early Holden Car Club. Uh, so obviously the surrounding areas as well as Ballarat. Um, and uh, today you will see about 150 vests out there. So a lot of people helping on the, on the day, which is really, really uh, wonderful to get that support. Have you got a website? Uh, yes, uh, Ballarat and District Early Holden Car Club. If you Google that, you'll find it because the web address is a little bit complicated, but along the bottom of the screen maybe. Um, and uh, All GM Day as well, allgmday.com.au. Good on your website, details across the bottom of the screen. Check out this club and be a part of it if you're into your Holdens. Justin, congratulations again, mate, and uh, well done for this year. Thanks, folks. We really appreciate your support. I tell you, you know, it's not every day of the week you stumble across an F.E. Holden. Not only just an F.E. Holden, but a very original one. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks, Fletch. Um, tell us about this gem behind us here. Uh, I've had it about... 12 years and um, done a bit to it. We can see it's original, I mean even in the back door on the uh, offside it's got the original rust that's taken well over half a decade to get there. Yeah, <laughs> still there, yeah work in progress. Done a bit of painting on it on the back end it was yep. fairly rusty there yep. but other than that yeah and some new vinyl on the seats yep. but the rest is fairly original. The legendary grey engine up front looks uh, all new and shiny there, what have you done there? Okay. The oh, uh, bit of grey GMH paint, the colour, and a uh, few new seals. But it, it, the motor is fairly a fairly old motor. Now, what year are we looking at here, Paul? 
56. 19. Good year. Yeah. Yeah, 1956 Olympics. Yep. And some people like myself were probably born that year. Right. So, so hence. Not, not given too much away. Hence why you have a FE Holden, because you were born in 56. And the two-tone paint, I mean, just a thing that a lot of the older cars were just so good at, you know, giving yeah. the, the paint colour on the roof different to the rest of the body. Yeah. There's something about that. Yeah. No, it's the era. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah. So yeah. plans, what are you going to do with the, with the car down the track, Paul? Uh, probably take that bit of rust out the back door, like yeah. you said, yeah. and uh, keep enjoy driving it. Good on you, Yeah. Mate. Yeah, well, no. it's, it's an excellent uh, example of, yeah. of an FE Holden here today. And even uh, when you look around the boot, uh, see the spare in there and uh, yeah. you know, your, your bracket holding that in place. And it's just uh, obviously hasn't had a hard life. And it's no. it's just great to it's, see in 2015 a car yeah. like this turn up. No, it's enjoy it and I uh, know it's good. Yeah, good yeah. On you. yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Well, you're no worries. Thanks, Fletch. If you love your classic Americana iron, you'll love a Fletch Tour. Have a look at this. There is nothing quite like a Fletch Tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Book a Fletch Tour, it's amazing. We've seen some absolutely amazing cars. What an event. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit Tour. I would make it a point to go to Fletch Tours and come to Detroit. There are five Fletch Tours. Select the one that suits you best. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Look what Hare and Forbes has got. They've got this. They've got that. They've got this. And they've got that. They've got this. They've got that. They've got this. And they've got that. And so much more. But do you? Whatever you want, they've got. Walk through their doors, inspect their stores. Hare and Forbes has the range. And remember, you can always browse and buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. Moving through, it's time for an American-built GM car on today's show. Welcome, Paul. How are you? Very good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Are you enjoying the event? Very much so. This car here's standing out. I mean, a lot of them are, but I mean, wow, there's only so many that you can put onto an episode. A 1959 Buick Electra. Now, I'll let you in a little secret. If someone said, Fletch, what American car would you like to have in your shed? this would be one of them. I think these are one of the coolest shaped Buicks ever built. Now I have a lot of time for all the Buicks. Cadillacs were known for the highest fin, Buicks were known for the longest fin. And this one here being a two-door, Paul, it's just, it's amazing. I'm very lucky to have it and I certainly agree it's an amazing car. I was looking for a 59 Pontiac and this came along and as a kid I saw these in uh, Custom Rodder and uh, AmeriCar Australia and I thought wow that's an amazing looking car and the 59's are really the peak of, of uh, US car design in terms of flamboyance and, and they just let it all hang out and yep. um, it's probably a bit of a backlash which is why I started being defined in 60 so yep. very brief period of some amazing cars and Buick of course was the basis for the uh, entire GM line in 59, as, as I'm sure you know. Paul, there's no doubt about it, you've picked on an iconic year of car. I mean, the choices you had, the La Samba, the Electra and the Invicta as well. Uh, but you have a look at the front. I mean, it looks cranky. It's got like a cranky man's face. It almost looks like Jack Nicholson's looking at you. 
Well, there have been some people that say it's the most mean or evil looking car around and I'm just glad this model wasn't chosen for the movie Christine because uh, I wouldn't have liked to have seen that at all. No, it could have been a bad omen. Let's have a look out back there for a sec. I mean, have a go at the, uh, the style there. The fins, they go down into the trunk. I mean, what was it with fins back in the late 50s? I mean, they just went berserk, didn't they? Well, I think the funny thing is you look at them then and TVs had fins, tables had fins. Um, your TV set was like you'd take off like a rocket the way they were designed and the cars were the same. It was just the whole jet age, the space age. It was a pretty exciting time and the cars reflected that. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, looking at the interior as well, um, uh, original interior, I mean, that, that's just amazing. I mean, rocket-inspired dashboard as well. I mean, the whole thing is just so cool. It doesn't matter what angle you look at this particular car. It really is quite amazing and taking photographs of you can get a totally different look from a different angle. Uh, there's just so many different ways the car can look depending on the approach and just the attention to detail. Things like the backup lights which are like a jet pod. They don't bother doing that sort of thing these days. It's just a very basic piece of plastic that does the job. But back then every part of the car had style. It was back in an era where people used to not only wear jewellery, but they would wear their car. Certainly an extension of uh, one's persona. And uh, a car depicting such style and class, uh, you know, is beyond words. Um, now, one thing I must ask you as well, Paul, which is interesting, there were so many engines across the ranges made. What powers this one? The 401, which was new for 59, uh, the big claim to fame was the 445 foot-pounds of torque, so the air cleaner actually has 445 on it. Usually you've got the engine capacity there, they put the torque on because that was a big figure. Yeah. And Buicks were known for being torquey to get the car off the line. This weighs 2,025 kilos, yeah. so it's a big lump of car, uh, 325 horsepower, yeah. and it really needed that to get it moving. The 348 was the base model for that year. Good on you, Paul. Had to pick on him for this car. Uh, I mean, it is a little bit of any, many, miny, mile around here. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter where you, you lay your finger, you, you're going to pick a classy car here today. But uh, as I alluded to earlier, there is just something about the 59 and the 60 Buick. And uh, mm. good on you, Paul. Well done. Much appreciated, Fletch. Thank you. Time for Daniel Bliss now. And he is in Bliss with this 1970 HG Monaro. How are you, Daniel? Oh, good yourself, Fletch. Good, mate. Good. Beautiful job here you've done. Thank you very kindly. Makes you proud to drive it along and turn up at, a, at an event like this. And might I say, the fourth annual 2015 All GM Day, quite a pinnacle event. It is, yeah, I've been to three of them ones. Good on you, Daniel. Tell us the deal here with the Monaro. All right, so I've had it for 27 years, bought this one in Alice Springs for $1,000. <laughs> Before you go any further, they're going to bury they're going to bury this bloke with this car. You're never going to get rid of it, are you? No, never, no, never. I should be able to double my money, I think, back if I sell it, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah should be able to, I think. Yeah. At the time you're ready for your walking frame, mate, you'll be amazed how much you can get for this car. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, yeah, no, I had it for 27 years, um, had a HK front grille on it at one stage, had HT tail, tail lights in it at one stage, so she's had a bit of lots of stuff going, but I've kept it pretty original with a six in it all that time. Yeah. Yep. That was uh, my uh, my next comment. Uh, again, it's uh, fairly rare to see a six-cylinder car, um, you know, of this genre, so um, that's really, really nice to see. It looks spectacular. I mean, GDS uh, logo on the door, um, just everything so period correct. Um, steering wheel, um, the amount of chrome and, and stainless uh, beside the seats in these cars too. They yeah, is, they yeah. detailed them nicely, didn't they? They did, yeah, very much so, yeah. So a lot of it was done, um, a lot of chrome, a lot of stainless, and, and it looks good, yeah, yep. And as we alluded to earlier, the uh, six-cylinder engine there, the uh, famous red engine up front there, the 186 doing a marvellous job. Oh, perfect. Purrs along beautifully. They're a great six, weren't they? They are, yeah, my word. They are. I've got another spare one at home just in case, but yeah, yeah never swap it out for anything. Yeah. It's a great motor. So have you done anything um, specs-wise with that, Daniel, or just left it? standard as? Yeah, no, it's got a um, 3060 wade cam in it. Um, it's got a yellow terrace two-stage head in it. Um, but apart from that, headers are all the same, carby's all the same. Yeah. So yeah, it's got the yeah. WW2 carby in it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's in the uh, department of being sensible as well as we, we go on through with these classic cars. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's not about speed, in my opinion. I mean, you've got the class of the car, the type of car, and um, just to be able to, to go along on the highway and do your 80, 90 k's an hour, your 100 k's an hour. I mean, driving to an event and driving back home again as safe as you can yep. I mean it just makes it doesn't it oh it certainly does I'm an OHS officer so I've got to be careful especially even on the road so yeah my word I said the right yep. comments to this yep. bloke didn't yes. I that's it <laughs> Daniel thank you so much for being on today's show uh, it's a pleasure to have you um, on this week's episode of Classic Restos with the type of car that you've got I mean even down to the push on dress rims I mean you've just done an outstanding job and you've had it for 27 years actually 
you've had it for so long, it should be this good. Yeah, thank you. You've yeah. had enough time to do it. Yeah, I have, yeah, yeah. plenty of time. It's probably start time to restart again one day, so, but no, I'll leave that to my daughter, I think, when she takes it. Good <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daniel. No worries. Thanks, Fletch, mate. Have a good day. Well, there you go. There's just some of the fourth annual 2015 All GM Day here at the Ballarat Turf Club in regional Victoria. I hope to see you back here next year for this fantastic GM event. In the meantime, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show. Classic Classic Restos merchandise, contact information on joining us on a Fletch tour in 2016, including Route 66, and contacting the major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show, no matter where you're watching from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm Eggs.